Yo, episode 235, the first episode of 2022, and it may be the last, you never know. Um, happy birthday, Brazil. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, it's those little uh, bracelets. Okay, I didn't know if it was that or the or the uh, pencil holder. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, whoa, <laughs> so you just took <laughs> weapons. <laughs> I didn't know you wanted to kill me. <laughs> Uh, I can't tell. Was it a Michael Jordan card? I couldn't tell. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> Just stop. Yeah, Caesar. Caesar's. Uh, can can you drop the Portuguese though? What is it again? Two thirty-five. Two That's two thirty-four. Two forty-five. Two thirty-five. Oh, two There we go. Um, don't sleep. Uh, oh, R.I.P. Uh, Lua, man. That's the real one. I, I'll never forget. What, what year was that? Was that 2019? I remember when you was chilling right here one time. Many times. Mm -hmm. I almost sat on her. Oh, no, that was a cat. Uh, that was a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what, what year did she pass? 2019? 2019. May 2019, Lua passed away. She really. transitioned, you know? Mm -hmm. I'll never forget when I was in Portugal and I'm walking down the street and I could see some random Portuguese person talking to their dog and the dog's name is Lua. I'm like, damn, y'all got some basic ass name for this dog. <laughs> I thought that name was cute. Y'all named it. Y'all named it's it. It's Moon in Portuguese. Y'all basic as hell. What the <laughs> um, but yeah, episode 235, we made a podcast. Wow, this is the fifth year that we've been doing this podcast. It's not five years yet. That will be in May. I don't know if we'll make it because coming into the, I feel like it's one of Caesar's New Year's resolutions was to, uh, be more distant with me, which is fine. You know, uh, he's acting weird these past few days. I don't know why, uh, you know, who, who knows, but, uh, <laughs> you know, he got the beard, he got the beard lined up. You know what I mean? You know, he got the blonde platinum blonde hair, you know what I mean? He got the hood on. Acting's emotionally draining to be honest. Okay. So we got, that, that, that's the first time we've been talking about this for the last uh, 15 minutes before the recording started. So that's the first honest thing I got from him. Well, I, not, now, I'm, now I'm on record. It's different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still phony, but uh, um, anyway, uh, first episode of the new year, 2022, hopefully everybody's staying safe. Forget a happy new year, have a safe new year because boy, Omarion is out here trying to touch everybody. He's dancing down the middle of the street with the rain on the on the ground. You know what I mean? He's heart pumping his chest. He's going down with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's doing the uh what was it? What was that uh Twitter video? He's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just uh, that was the best thing ever. I love that. <laughs> yeah, um, he's going in. He's going in, and I just hope that everybody. Um, I know, I know there was like a crazy amount of increase in positive cases during Christmas and New Year's because families came together. I know tons of people within circles of mine that went to see family got positive tests um, because of the family stuff. I know you're really excited to see your family, but I think I'd be more excited about you know. So you staying alive and keeping others safe and staying alive. You know, our numbers, we hit a million positive cases in America. That's insane. So let's just, you know, let's just keep safe out here, please. Look at Caesar with circles. Okay. You got circles of uh, people in your life. All right. Damn. You thought, you thought I was going to let that slip with this. Some of, them, some of them cutting down too. I can tell. Some of them. <laughs> some, of them ain't making, some are going to be semi-circles. <laughs> some ran its course. <laughs> Some of them ain't going around all the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, some of them about to be half moon. Some of them is a radius, not a diameter. No, some of them about to be a crescent in a minute, dog. Okay, yeah, they're not full moons, pause, but they're. Uh... <laughs> That's kind of a pause, dog, for on the full moon. All right, anyway, um, man, the biggest thing coming up this year, soon, this Sunday, today's the 6th. We got AFCON 2022. I mean, yo, off top, like, do you think they should be doing this? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna ask you that, but then I have another, I have another, we're gonna bring up something we brought up last episode, but I wanna ask you that first. Like, do you think they should be doing this tournament right now? Keep it a stack. More of me is leaning towards no. 
Um, just because I care, so no. But if it if but if I if I were to be mean and racist, I'd say I'd be like the opposite. But my heart what doesn't want like I don't want them to do it. But because I enjoy the sport and it'd be cool to just check something out, I, I want them to do it. Wait, you can't say both answers, dog. I know. I, I okay. I don't want them to do it, but I mean, you know, that's how I feel. No. <laughs> so you saying no for sure? No, I'm not for sure. I'm like in the middle. Like, I guess like I just don't want it. I don't want to like mentally accept any kind of like quarantine stuff from the last year. Like, I don't want that again, you know. And I don't. I don't also want them to do it, then reschedule it at like the summer, then something that's just going to be a mess. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, and I know it'll probably be rough having a tournament in the summer too. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, because whenever they reschedule things, they make it just horrific for the players. That's true. That's true. But, um, hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, if safety comes first, then please, please get rid of it. Like, please, especially if everybody's not fully vaxxed. I mean, from what I've seen around, I mean, we're talking about the whole continent. From what I've seen, they said like seven, eight percent of Africa is 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 uh, vaccinated. Whose fault? fault is that, though? No, I, I'm not. I'm not pushing any blame anywhere. Well, I, I, maybe they should do it the. Oh, but I love the fans in Afcon. Damn, where's it going to be at this year? Morocco? Where is it? I think it's in Gabon. Gabon? Okay. Let, let, let me double check. What'd you say? Where, where, where did you say? Morocco. Oh no no, <laughs> Morocco was uh, scared about Ebola. Um. Yeah, I have an I have an update on a player. Who? On uh, Kita Baldi. What happened to him? I got I got a, I got a, I got my oh. eye on him. Oh, it's, uh oh. Okay, we'll talk about it. Um, we'll talk about it when we talk about Senegal. Um, no, it's gonna be in. Um, I'm sorry, it's gonna be in Cameroon. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably. It's probably they probably got nice fields there, so probably a nice nice place to play. Um. What Cameroon got? Cameroon got some money. Um. So, uh. So you're gonna you're gonna lean more towards no. Yeah, I almost oh. just feel like sad saying it, but okay. I don't think they should do it. Do you feel like if they're gonna do it, like the people in the state, if they're gonna have fans, that they should be vaccinated though, probably. Yeah, like only allow vaccine. But damn, it's like also another fall, or at least like like rapid test results, something like that. Just make sure it's like really as 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 safe as possible, but. If they were to play it with no, as long as they, if they played it with no fans, then I I respect that decision too. Like safety's got to come first, you know. That yeah. be, because the thing is, I know with the fans, like if you're not gonna put them in the game, they're probably just gonna do some wild ass thing outside and turn up anyways. Like like with the with the TV and the group gatherings, because I don't think camera was any kind of shut down quarantine parameters going on. So, I mean, that, not not to my knowledge. Yeah, so I'm sure the fans will just congregate somewhere else for the event. So you know, like. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't sound clear about it because I don't want to say it. Like, but to be honest with you, they should not have the tournament. Like the, the the especially in that region, a majority of those players. What is it like 80, 80, 85 percent of players are coming from Europe, which had the largest amount of outbreaks for Omicron and variant. But that's where everything has been rooted. Every single team has had like at least ten players get positive results. So, I mean, it well, seems I iffy. Well, okay. Well, I'll say this. Most of the players are going to be domestic players in Africa. Mo most of the players you have, like most of the players in AFCON play in Africa, like in the tournament. There's a lot of teams, dog. It's like, I know, but Senegal had a, had a lot of uh, foreign players on our team. I saw their roster. Yeah. But like, I mean, but like, I mean, you mean like other teams, not just like the big heavy hitters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause we got like, we got like Mauritius, uh, Mauritania is playing in AFCON too. Uh, I just heard that for the first time. That's a new one. That's a new one. Where's that? Australia? Uh, it's stupid. <laughs> but I'm definitely. Oh, so you just come, kind of coming back a little bit. Does he kind of like me a little bit again? Um, a little bit. Oh. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely gonna uh, have some random facts about some countries. But I mean, I kind of agree with you. Like, I feel like the 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 best thing to do would would be to cancel it or play it in the summer. They played Afcon in the summer before. I, like. There's this idea that, oh, my God, it's so hot in the whole Africa during the summer. And that's not really the case. Like, you know, oh, my God, 
they're dark skinned because it's so hot. I'm like, dog, the hottest place in the world is like California. So stop playing with me. It's like hotter in Chile than in like uh, most of sub-Saharan Africa. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is Africa like one of the few continents that have every, every single type of um, uh, ecosystem involved, right? As Africa has like almost every single type of, from like tall mountain peaks, to like jungles, desert, everything there. So yeah, yeah, there's exactly. various parts of Africa people are accustomed to different types of climates. Yeah, and it's not like the whole thing is just some like the summer is going to be insane. Um, I remember here in uh, in Southern California being 110 in October. So I remember one time we had a we had a December here where it was like 90 91 or something like that on Christmas Eve one time. So exactly. So um, I what I honestly feel like because we know that the uh, like the COVID numbers go down in the summer, I feel like they should have just done it in the summer. Um, now that kind of goes to what I wanted to also mention that we kind of mentioned before when um like I guess like there's certain teams who didn't want to release their players to go and then you had um what was it Samuel Eto and like you had some other you know some other individuals on the internet <laughs> here, here he goes here saying he goes. like okay they were this is what they were saying and I'm gonna keep it a stack dog they're like, oh, you know, they would never say this about the Euros, like they're saying about AFCON. And I'm like, well, dog, the Euros happens not during the season. But, AFCON, but is, AFCON is happening during January. Of course, managers and other people are going to be upset. Oh, but, it, they asked some player, right? Oh, oh, it was Sebastian Holland. No, is his name Holland? Sebastian Holler, 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 Holler. Yeah. But but also they, they don't be they don't be sweating when players have to go to Concap stuff about that too or Asia tournament. One more time, one more time. They don't be saying that about like players that try to go to Asia or, or Conca CONCACAF stuff. Yeah, but like we're talking about like international breaks as opposed to like a whole tournament during but, the But season. is it is it AFCON's fault? Maybe they put AFCON on January on their on purpose. They're I, like, I'm, well, we don't want to be we want to make it tough for y'all anyways. <laughs> hey, maybe AFCON is freedom fighting. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe AFCON wants to be in the summer, but they just if people are like, oh no, we got too much stuff. Y'all can be in the winter, like uh, okay. I, like, I don't know, but at the same time, like, whoever that dude was trying to, like, uh, trying to, like, get some black clout chaser points. <laughs> hey, man, let me tell you something right now, Ben. Samuel Eto. No, it wasn't Eto. Samuel it was... Eto. Don't be coming at Sam. This man has been doing it, dog. No, no, don't it wasn't it. him. It was, it was, um, I think it was, like, what's the, what's the dude who used to play for, like, Arsenal? Some four? Oh, uh, not Henri. No, no, no. Patrick it, no, no, it's an English dude. Was it? I, I, I keep thinking Bradley Wright Phillips, but that's a dude from New York Red Bulls. Soul Campbell. <laughs> it was some dude. It was some English black dude trying to be like, oh, they would never ask somebody like that about the Euros. I'm like, dog. Of course, the Euros isn't is not during the season. True. You know, like, come on, like. Yeah, but I'm still on their side a little bit though for the culture. I'm on. I'm on. Like Sebastian Holler is like, oh, they would never ask me that if I played in the Euros. Well, dog, we're talking about something that's in the season. That's the difference. I don't think they would ask you that if AFCON was during the offseason. But the other people are trying to, I'm like, you're trying to clout chase some like random black points. And I wish I could but, look up his, that dude's wife. Also, but when they have FIFA World Qualifiers in the, in the winter, they don't be telling people to stay either. Yeah, but that's that's an international break, though. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, AFCON just get the short end stick on all ends, huh? I mean, I'm just saying, like, the like Sebastian Holler, like whatever, how you want to answer the question, but the people putting the sauce on it, I'm like, you're clout chasing, dog. Like, yeah. I mean, you ask him the question, I'm sure he's like frustrated and like, dude, like, I mean, you wouldn't be asking me this otherwise, but people that I'm, of course, that are also adding on to it, like, okay, now you're just like amping it, but I guess I can see both sides, but I definitely understand your, your part of it too. Like, I mean, at the same time, like, it's in it's in the winter, like you know, like what during the season have, we just had we're having matches already this week back again, like you know what I mean? It's during the season, dog. Like, of course, that's a, that that is something that inhibits your club team success when it's in when it's during the season. But for me, I'm just like whoever that dude was. I forgot his name. I'm like, dog, like really? That's not the first time, though. I remember drug used to have to fight um, to be allowed to go to uh, Afcon back in the day for Chelsea. They used to like try to make him not go. I mean, like, from that aspect, I'm like, yeah, like, if he wants he, to go play, like, he if, he, to, yeah. 
Yeah, like he should be able to go. Like the team shouldn't try to. I, I'm sure behind closed doors, the team's gonna be like, "Damn dog, like what can we do to make you stay?" Yeah, they probably make it real difficult for him to say yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're probably giving him incentives. Like, look, we'll, we'll, you know, what I mean, don't you like that one house? Like, we'll give it to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, some random. You know what I was thinking, Caesar? Honestly, I'm like, really, dog? Like, you never even came up with transfer ban though. Like, you're probably every time there's monkey chance, you just say the same thing over and over. They would like. I mean, I, I tweeted that the, the, they be doing more for. They be doing more for pitch invaders than they do for monkey chance. Pitch invader, mm-hmm. your parents get a one year ban. That's genius. What, what kind of where's the innovation for that on the on a damn monkey chant? Monkey chant, they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll just make some more flags and posters. <laughs> yeah, and and, that, and that, probably that that dude probably said the same thing too. The, the dude who's kid invaded the pitch is doing more time than the guy who did monkey chance. The guy monkey chance back at the game on Sunday and Wednesday. The monkey chant dude probably got that uh, damn man. The and, monkey chant dude, an employee. The fucking... He probably got the NFT with the damn uh, monkey man. And he got bored eight yacht club. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I was just like, can you guys give some context to the question, please? Like, I'm obviously I I am here to fight against racism in the sport and like uh, <laughs> and and uh, and like um, bias. But don't, don't put sauce on it. When, like, we don't we don't need the extras, dude. Like, we don't need that. We, we've done a lot now. We could do a lot more if they implement transfer bans for racism, but they're probably scared. If whoever the dude was, if his team that he like fans is doing monkey chance, and they were like, "Yeah, you're gonna get a transfer ban," he probably be like, "Wait, hey, that's kind of harsh." <laughs> uh, I didn't, I didn't make that sound. I was booing. I swear. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, Caesar, let's get into Avcon a little bit. Um, I do have some notes here. We'll go over the different groups. Did reunion make it? Who? Reunion make it or no? <laughs> Caesar, why, why, why are you going to bring Reunion into it? I think I think a team from Re, Reunion is uh, not part of Africa. Oh. Uh, um, I, think a, I think a team from Reunion, if I'm not mistaken, did play in the French Cup. How about Madero? <laughs> they didn't make it. They didn't qualify. <laughs> uh, but I think a team from Reunion did, did make it to the French Cup. God I, damn, what a flight. What the yeah. Okay, I think they were saying it's like fifteen thousand kilometers or something like that. That'd be phenomenal to like. That'd be so dope if you're just a kid that plays like an academy and reunion. You're just like a kid on the island, right? And they're like, "Yo, we're gonna play in a French Cup, dog." I'd probably cry. (laughs) That's the sickest experience ever in the world. Like, oh man, we're gonna go to France. What? Yeah, um, like I could be. It was. Is it the Toulon thing? No, no, they played in like the actual French Cup. Oh, cool! Like, like, like they're they're uh, oh, like a team played in like the one, two, three, four, whatever, like yeah. French Cup league. The oh, that's dope. Yeah, I I, t- I, I hate to admit it. I actually enjoy like Copa de Race. I like that stuff. I like seeing these these random ass teams play. I'd be excited looking up where they're from. Yeah, if I'm not like, it, it might have been Reunion, but it could have been one of them other islands too, though, because friends do got a few islands they still own mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. on the low. Mm. Um, Andy Lou. <laughs> classic. Um, damn, now I kind of want to look, but like I can't tell by the names because they're just in French. <laughs> it's just some random. What they play against? Oh wait, this might have been it. Just some team got beat like ten zero. Is this them? Let. Oh, this might be them, but I can't even. I can't even get a damn link for this team. Oh, makes yeah. you want to make makes you want to make a Wikipedia page for them. Uh, okay, hold on. I I know this is annoying, but I'm try, I'm gonna try to look this team up. You're good. Les Jamu. Okay, let me see where this is. What? Okay, you know what? That, that never mind. Um. Okay. Anyway, let's go. To, whoa. Um. Let's go to Group A. We got Bur- Group A: Burkina Faso. Cape Verde, Cabo Verde, yeah, Cameroon, the host, and Ethiopia. Should a Molten get called up? Uh, good question. I mean, I guess we'll we won't know. To I mean, it's hard to say, but and who was that one? Ethiopia. Oh, okay, shoot. 
He tell me it's pretty good too. They might ball out on low. Um, them. Cameroon's obviously very good. Um, Ethiopia is having some issues uh, domestically right now. They did have a, you know, there was a president from a different uh, ethnic background that got elected. So people were kind of mad. There was a revolt in the Tigray region, and they're still having a little bit of issues there. I didn't know about that. No man, it sucks. Yeah, uh, I don't, we I don't really about, hear. I don't hear really much about like East African politics. Oh well, we're gonna hear some more about Ethiopia later when I talk about Egypt. Um, I think I think my I think my dad was Ethiopian on low. Your dad definitely looked East African, dog. <laughs> you know what's one of the worst? The one of the worst musics ever is like music from like Ethiopian Somali is so bad. Uh, I can like, imagine. They're like the they're, they're, okay, that was racist, but they be playing. I don't, think they're, I don't think they're swaggy like that. I think they okay, that's racist too. They be having swag they be, is not racist. They be putting some weird setting on the keyboard. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> too much Islam. Whoa! To make, to make baller hits. Okay, well, Ethiopia, I think, is like half and half, but hmm. um, I remember the 2015, um, 2015. AFCON, or maybe it was 2017. I remember Cape Verde being really good on the low, like pretty, pretty good. So I wouldn't be surprised if them in Cameroon like advance. Um, because Cape Verde was kind of good on the low. I think a lot of those guys end up going to play in Portugal. Um or like at least like in the lower divisions, but like they can make it up to the higher divisions in Portugal. What are the two main languages in Ethiopia? Is it, is it, uh, do they speak English? Something like that too, right? No, Ethiopia was never colonized, actually. Um, really? Was, no, they weren't. Um, wow, that's cool. Ethiopia, they speak, um, what is it called? Uh, I, I don't know if they speak Tigray or if that's Eritrea, but I think, um, there's another language like Harar or something like that. I, you know, to be honest with you, like, I kind of forgot. I, I, okay, I, I, I was just wondering, like, some, some offices, like, some. Some African countries they have like uh they have like the second language allows them to go play in these European countries a lot easier. Yeah. Um what's the name? Ethiopia. Yeah, you're right. It's uh um uh they have a bunch. It's uh Oromo. Oh yeah, um, that's Harari about, too. Omo is a minority language. Harari. Um yeah, they have a bunch. And then you the one you said Tigri. Tigrinya or something like that. They I don't oh, okay. pronounce that. They said it. But the the main ethnic group there, like the largest amount, is the Oromo people. That's like thirty four percent. They're thirty four percent of the population apparently. Okay, for some reason. And damn it, sixty seven percent Christian. Oh my god. Um, the Muslim people always say that it's a lot less than that. Um, the, 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 oh, you know what? You know what? I actually, what I am reading Wikipedia. I, I don't doubt that. You're right. I am just reading Wikipedia stat. I'm sure that they'd be buffing stats all the time or, or someone whatever reference article could buff stats for the religious favoritism towards like Christianity. Yeah. Sure. I feel like it's more half and half. I, I honestly, that the realest thing ever is if you told me like that's capital, but like, I believe you dog. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, like I absolutely believe you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but Ethiopia's team is pretty good. Um, Cape Verde is pretty good. Cameroon, obviously really good. I don't know much about Burkina Faso, but. Um, I feel like Burkina Faso had a player I knew about too. Um, uh, was it the guy from the guy that played for, uh, uh, Via Real was he from Burkina Faso with the the streak in his hair? I don't know, dog. Well, you know, you know, what I'm talking about right? the baller. I do, but I, I don't remember his name. But I don't know. Burkina if Faso. I think they have like one good guy or something like that. I can't remember though. <laughs> Let me look at this last time they beat the dog shit out of Gabon. And keep the line <laughs> we literally, I'm just gonna say this right now. No one does better Afghan covers than us for the last five years, dog. <laughs> Dead ass, dog. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna. Keep- I know we're for we be going in on fucking Afcon. We always do, though. We always talk about Afcon on here. Okay, I'm gonna keep it real. Like I feel like, nah, man. <laughs> okay, run the fade. I don't know if we watched 2019, but because I feel like it was happening the same time as um, the Women's World Cup. And- Traore. That's who was from Lyon. He's from Burkina Faso. Oh, really? Yeah, he's from. That's the guy from Burkina Faso. I remember. I remember he's a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually have some, the other striker too. They have, there's this backup big dude on Ajax named Lasina Traore. He plays now for Shakhtar, I believe. Uh, okay. He's a big, the big dude that plays for Shakhtar. He's from Burkina too. He's a baller. Okay. Yeah, that's there's, there's some good attackers. I don't really know much. Of, nobody else on the team really though. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, 
you, like as we see, like in international tournaments, I feel like it really comes down to the midfield and yeah, it is. You can have those guys, but it's the midfield really. That's why that Senegal team was so good. They had a really good midfield. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go to Group B. Mm-hmm. We got Guinea Conqueror, okay. um, Malawi. Guinea Conqueror, like well, that's 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 the um, the capital city. They they said that to distinguish it from Guinea Bissau. Oh, okay. Um, I, I'm learning here. Ma- Malawi, Zimbabwe, and Senegal, which you got some news about, uh, Kate Balde apparently. You gotta keep your eye on Kate Balde though. He he, I, I think he might be a might be a him a bleach dog. Oh, dog! I seen a picture, picture recently. I was like, I know you, dog. To say you only have played in like southern Italy, and you've played in in South France. Yeah, I don't know what's going. Now you're back in Senegal. You look at my heat different, dude. Dog, can look I see? What was the picture on his IG? Go to his Instagram. Oh no, dude! I was like, mm. do him a bleach. He had that weird, you know, when they they do that, they have like whoa, that, that Caesar, whoever this person shaking that hand, that's not him. <laughs> that's not him, Caesar. Caesar, he that's changed not him. a lie. He changed so much, Caesar. That's not him. Yeah, two oh, Italian dog. Uh, you see the, the his like the pigmentation is different now. You know what Caesar, it is. Him yeah. a bleach. He does. Oh my god, you can kind of tell in this picture here where he's like when he's I, sitting on the oh yeah, because like you, you see the see differences, the, you see the splotches, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, him because a, it's it's because when you do it, it's not like thorough, it's like parts of your skin get lighter first, yeah, like damn. the cheeks and stuff and the forehead every time. Him a bleach. I dog. think so, dog. I'm like, dog, you played in South France. Yeah, I know you're in Cagliari right now, whatever, or some some like that. But I mean, yeah. Damn, dog. That hotel, whatever they was at in this damn uh, in Senegal, looked kind of fly, though. Dog, not only that, they, that team got to go to the They also gave them the government plane, too, like the this Air Senegal. I'm like, heesh. <laughs> I, I don't like that. But, uh... Nah, dog. Give it all, baby. Let's go. <laughs> that When they showed him walking into the... Uh, that was another thing. I, I watched another guy, a player, go to, like, Nigeria, and they okay. showed the Nigeria team hotel. Jesus Christ! It was like a, a damn uh, empire. It was beautiful. <laughs> okay, Caesar. Uh, <laughs> what? what, what, what? No, the second picture from the like the second picture, uh, not the one, not the the one right before where he's shaking the dude's hand, where it's like the whole team. Is it what I, he said on the plane? No, no, no. This is like the whole team is like with the president or whatever. Yeah. Um, I need you to zoom in and look to the left, kind of like r- zoom in to the left and. Uh, one row from the top is a dude with a with a with a kufi on. Do you see him? <laughs> Who invited Skeletor? Come on, no. Who invited Skeletor? Hey, don't do that. Don't do oh, wait, that. He's- Oh, he's um. No, no, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. You know what he is. <laughs> yes. But damn, that picture of Bald they literally with a smile. I'm like, this is a whole. He's like my tone now. Either <laughs> well, I he's bleeding. This is dog. crazy. He is like honestly. That's, that's sad. And I'm, I like, I feel even in a picture when he's shaking his hand. Uh, at the the last picture, yeah, he just the first- posted. You could just tell like his tone, like the whole skin tone, so much brighter now. It don't even look like him. Poor guy. Anyways, that, that's a real that's a that's a real Catalonian right there. Um not my people, but that's a real Catalonian right there. You feel me? Um play play, well, play for that team too, wore the whole jersey too, the real Catalonia game. He did. Um well we got Senegal, Malawi, Guinea, uh, and Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is kind of decent too. I think they, got... they have some big upset. That's a big upset. And they got the guy from um uh they got the not Zambo and Gisa. They got like somebody from. I think, I think he's from Leon too. A little skinny dude. Oh, uh, the midfielder, right? Um, he's kind of a winger. I forgot his name. No, wasn't he Cameroonian? No, I feel like he's from Zimbabwe. Not, not Adelaide. Not Adelaide. The other guy. Oh no, not that guy. Um, no, I think his name is. Um, I feel like I haven't seen him play in a while though. Um, he's a little skinny winger dude. I think he used to be on Angers. Um, let me let me see. His name is. Everybody looks up. Oh, the Afghan squad. That's great. Um, wait a minute. 
Uh, yeah, Tino Cotero, 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 yeah, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's, he's, good. Good. he's good. He's a baller. I haven't, I feel like I haven't seen him play in a minute. He but, deleted uh, Afcon squad. Yeesh. Um, but yeah, uh, Zimbabwe is pretty good too. Yeah, Tino Tenda, whatever Cataweria, he, he's playing. He's good. Yeah, he's pretty good. Um, one of these guys plays for a team in Zimbabwe called FC Platinum. That's a dope ass name. Big thugging. I mean, they got there's all... a team in, in Zimbabwe called Chicken Inn. <laughs> God damn! Oh man, <laughs> like chicken in. I mean, dog, they thugging, dog. I'm about to look up this jersey though. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's move on to Group C. I do got some facts about these groups here, about these teams here. We got. <gasps> oh my God! Are you looking at chicken in? Yeah. Okay. Share it, share it. Can you, can't you share it? I sent you in a group. Oh, oh, share the screen? No, that's fine. It's fine. I'm not showing this to the screen, dog. Oh. <laughs> the logo is nuts. <laughs> yeah, man. Damn. Are they owned by a restaurant? <laughs> Castle Lager, uh, Lager Premier? Yeah, it is. It's actually a big uh, fast food company in Zimbabwe. Yeah, goddamn. This shit might be good on the low. Um, I'd be down to try it. What's the name? Okay, let's go to Group C. Group C, we got Comoros, Gabon, Ghana, and Morocco. Obviously, we just heard that Aubameyang tested positive for uh, COVID. Hopefully, he's able to come back before. Uh, I feel like this is like his fourth time, too. Hopefully, he's able to come back. Um, obviously, Ghana is a powerhouse. Morocco is a powerhouse. And I've seen Comoros play there pretty good. But I do have some facts about Comoros and Morocco, Caesar, that you might not have heard of. Comoros. How is Comoros spelled? C O M O R O S. They're a small oh, island. Oh, I've never seen this in my life. New, I love when Bam gives me a new island. It makes me so happy. Go ahead, though. Um, I used to have a Comoros flag. Um, I used to like keep in my car in San Diego. No, you did not. Well, I, well, I, how the f- Caesar, because you know why? Because this is back in my Muslim days. The, the, the flag was green and white. It had a like a crescent moon with four flat, uh, four stars because of four islands. What a perfect description. And, and it had. Um, I think it had like Muhammad and Allah on it or something like that. I, like maybe that was the one before. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I used to have that flag in my car. Um, okay, Caesar, Comoros history, crazy. There was a dude named Bob Denard who literally ran up in uh, Comoros, a French dude, and took over the island nation. Um, I think he is sad. They, they had, they had, there was like a socialist revolutionary named uh Ali Saleh I think and Bob Denard came there with like 50 guys and took over and like put some other dude in charge literally like 50 guys um and they, that that guy was ruling for a long time Bob Denard like converted to Islam and then he like converted to Judaism at some point and with some other random stuff really interesting mercenary guy this is back when France was running wild in the 70s um but yeah I remember I used to read about Comoros a lot um, I feel like the island itself is like really pr- like the islands, like some of them are really pretty. Um, and I would be kind of down to visit there maybe, but, um, you never know. It could be quite ratchet. I don't know. Like, I don't think it's as developed as like seashells, um, because there's like an actual like resort place, but you know, if it is, I'd be down, go, go hit up the message and some call the then. Uh, I have no problem doing that. That'd be dope. <laughs> okay. Caesar. Also, we got Morocco. What? Bam, Morocco. That's boring. Everybody know about Morocco. Okay, whatever. But Caesar, did you know that Morocco on December 20th, 1777, was the first nation to recognize the United States of America? No way. Yes, Morocco. And did you say Gabon is in this group too? Yes. Uh, And Ghana. This is kind of a group of death. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 Aboumian just said a positive. I literally just said that. This dude is all over the place. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, shake it out. <laughs> Taylor Swift did one time. Um, yes, Morocco was the first country to recognize the United States of America. And they had been cooning for a long time. Actually, you could partly blame Morocco for the for the English getting so heavily involved in the Atlantic slave trade, while we're sitting here speaking English today, 
because Morocco and England teamed up to destroy the Songhai Empire out there in Western Africa at the time. In around 1590, Morocco and the English, Morocco Conan per usual, Morocco, y'all are Muslim. You're teaming up with Whitey to take down another Muslim empire, Coons. Um, and yeah, so they're they're big, big part of the reason why, why uh, England got so heavily involved in the slave trade because Morocco helped destroy that empire. And they were the first country to recognize the United States of America, Coonan hard. Might be the biggest Coons in the tournament. Group of death. <laughs> um, okay, let's go to group D. Group D, uh, we got Egypt, Guinea-Bissau, Nigeria, and Sudan. Um, I mean, Guinea-Bissau is kind of decent, too. I feel like I've seen them play a bit. Um, but Egypt and Nigeria obviously slated to probably make it out of this group. Um, I don't really know like how good Egypt or Nigeria's midfield is, but I feel like Nigeria's midfield would be a little bit stronger. Um I know that Egypt used to have that one guy with the crazy hair. What's his name? Mohamed El Nene. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he's so trash. I was so mad when Arteta was starting him. I'm like, are you insane? This dude's a bum, fool. Um like you're <laughs> like you're literally just doing that because Egypt has a large population. Um but yeah, what's the name? Um Caesar, did you know? Caesar! Did you know that after, you know, we had a civil war here in America, 1860, you didn't know that? <laughs> He's like, what? First civil- Americans. <laughs> 1860, 1865. January 6, 2021. Ooh. <laughs> um, 1860, 1865, we had a civil war. See, so did you know that a lot of them Confederate soldiers and generals took their lily white asses over to Egypt after the after they lost the civil war to help the Egyptian king or so fight against Ethiopia. I had no idea about that. Them fools literally. I just thought like they just like died in that war. It was over. No, a lot of them actually went to Brazil. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Jimmy Carter's like grandpa went to Brazil. <laughs> uh, um, what's the name? Um, yeah, a lot of them went there. There's pictures of them with like the fez on and like all kinds of like Arab regalia. They went out there to Egypt to try to help them them fight against Ethiopia. And you know what they did? They lost again. Ooh, double L's. Two L's. Yeah, they lost against Ethiopia. I hate, to, hate to see you take that long ass boat ride just to get clapped up. Well, you know what I mean? I actually love to see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wright Brothers wasn't around back then. Probably took the them, them, them dudes probably took L's in Brazil too. Well, they just escaped to Brazil. <laughs> Argentina, yeah, yeah. I think there's a picture of Jimmy Carter with his like at his like grandpa's grave in Brazil. His grandpa was like a Confederate. Soldier. Always like Jimmy Carter. <laughs> yeah, his grandpa was like a Confederate soldier. Um, yeah. but yeah, um. Nigeria, I, I just read some article the other day that they're saying Nigeria's population by like 2050 or 21 or 2100. And that's weird to say. Uh, <laughs> they're saying that uh, Nigeria's population could be the size of Europe. And I'm like, you people literally are fear mongering. Like, literally, they just say this to make white people scared. <laughs> yeah. Or they say this to like find some kind of reason to limit population in Nigeria. Yeah. Like just, to, just to bring some f- freaky ass monster shit to. Like, oh, well, you know, China does. They should do it in Nigeria, too. Let's just go over there and take care of this. Like, what? No. Um, yeah, I know they are the most populated uh, country in Africa. Um, but mm-hmm. that, that just sounds, you're just insane. <laughs> yeah, like, it's going to go from, like, 180 million to, like, 800 million. That's insane. Okay. Um, we'll see about that. Yeah, if Caesar got also, anything. But, but also, it's like, you're saying that about Nigeria, but also Nigeria, out of, like, a lot of African countries, they also have, like, the most... Uh, traveling population too, like a lot of the people in Nigeria, like go to other countries as well too. They immigrate in other countries, so they sure. could just increase them from from traveling as well. Yeah, I mean Nigerians be going around the world thugging hard. They em- emigrate a lot from, from Nigeria as well. One thousand percent. Yeah, they be out there. I've I've known many Nigerians in my day. Some some cool and some not. 
some some fly and some wearing uh, Obi Wan Kenobi clothes. Depends depends how Nigerian they are. Uh, hey, hey man, like hey. I mean, like first generation. Hey man, I can say that as an immigrant. <laughs> okay, I've been to a Nigerian wedding, but it wasn't one of the fun ones. But Was it a religious one. It wasn't one of the fun ones for sure, but. The videos of the phones look so like, like a fucking blast. I don't think they really want me there because I'm not Nigerian. No, you're a Nigerian. You're American. <laughs> yeah, I'm like they don't really want me there for real, for real. But there was some, um, I'll just say, some voluptuous women there, and I was like, <laughs> um, like, can I handle that? Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna try, yo. Um, you feel me? <laughs> I want to sing all the song. <laughs> It'd be great if you're at that when you just grab the mic and start singing it on stage. <laughs> I feel like I gotta listen to uh, Big Africa again. I haven't listened to it in so long. I gotta I gotta bump it again. Uh, the problem is when I start listening to it, I'm just like I just don't want to stop. I'm just like oh so good. it really is nonstop. Yeah. Okay, Caesar. Damn. Let's go to Group E. Ooh, Group E is kind of solid too. Algeria, Ivory Coast, Equatorial Guinea, and Sierra Leone. Equatorial Guinea, I remember them from the 2000, I want to say 15 or 17. I can't remember. They were solid. A lot of I remember they had some tall dude with dreads and he like played in some like third division team in Spain, but he'd also played for Real Madrid. You remember that guy? There was I a t- so. there was a dude from uh, on Equatorial Guinea. He had played for Real Madrid, but he like had the, was it like their academy team or something like that. I remember that. No, he had he had a couple like appearances for them. He probably doesn't play anymore. That was a while ago, and I feel like he was pretty old. But um, uh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they their their team is pretty good actually because a lot of them dudes because Equatorial Guinea being um, I think they're the only um country in Africa that speaks Spanish um. A lot of those, a lot of those players end up playing in um, in Spain, uh-huh. um, and I remember they had some like uh, they had some little dude who was um, like I feel like he was like half black, um, but he was pretty good too. Like uh-huh. they they had some good players. Um, damn, I wonder, I wonder if I could find. <sighs> nah, he was a Ford. Yeah, they got a... some guys that are. Interesting players on this team. Well, no, not that guy. Yeah, they got some. They actually have players that are born in Spain that represent Equatorial Guinea. They're like straight Spanish guys. Yeah, no, they, they, there's there's a lot of guys. It goes that, it goes that way as well too, huh? Yeah, for sure. No, they got some guys that like um that are like pretty good. Like they, you know, like they can tell they like like uh, well trained. Um, yeah. Like they, you can tell they, they you can tell they just came up learning play soccer and, and yeah and and I remember watching Equatorial Guinea like their their like their football was really good but like their players weren't as like athletic yeah. so I feel like against a team like Ivory Coast or Algeria well Algeria is pretty good but like maybe a team like Ivory Coast like maybe they could catch them slipping just like with their like football skills like they they were pretty good um but you know I'm here for the random facts mm. uh Caesar 2004 Boy, the, you, you've heard of Margaret Thatcher, former uh, UK prime minister. Yes, I've heard of Margaret Thatcher, yes. <laughs> a legend. <laughs> Did you say a legend? <laughs> um, she, uh, you know, she brought in the kind of like neoliberal kind of stuff in the UK around the same time Reagan, Reagan was doing it here. Yes. Um, her son, Mark Thatcher, in 2004, was uh, arrested for trying to overthrow the government of Equatorial Guinea and have a coup. This fool literally was out there trying to fly in weapons and take over that government. But he got caught. Of course, he didn't get punished very much. Um, But, you know, everybody snitched and it was a known fact that he tried to do that. But I feel like he got that idea from my mind. Mm. because years before that when i was learning about comoros and how that dude just went up there with 50 dudes and took it over i was like damn 
Equatorial Guinea got all this oil money and all this oil. They got this corrupt ass leader who just like, you know, send his kids to buy everything in France and just, you know, spend all the money. I'm like you could take like 50 dudes and you could take over Equatorial Guinea in no time. I was saying that in 2003. And then boom. And then next year, this fool tried it. And I'm like, dog, you lost because you're white. Like, you need a black person to like head this uh, the thing, <laughs> idiot. You over here flying around. They, if you were black, they'd just be like, oh, he's just some other warlord guy, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, um, and then you said also Algeria's in that group as well, too. Algeria's in that group. Yeah. Uh, Remember when they had that guy from Porto? What was his name? Brahimi or Brahimi? The ball guy. Yes, he yes. was he was a baller, dog. I, I, I wonder what happened to him. He, he didn't play Porto anymore. I he feel like he went to like I feel like he went to like Russia or something. Oh, he was really good. He should have went to the MLS and got cashed out. He was good. No, he was a baller. Yasin Brahimi. Yasin Brahimi. He was really good. Like he's on that team with that had Action Jackson and Charisma. He was put. They that was a dangerous team, dog. They, they they did get that result on against Bayern for a reason. They had a baller squad. Caesar, this dude's only thirty one. Really? When he was playing, but he started to look old back then. That's crazy. <laughs> He's playing in uh in Qatar right now. He's probably getting cashed out. There's just no way. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, this, this described as technically gifted. Yeah, he was really gifted. Like, he he could put moves on you. No, he was a baller, yo. Damn, this fool went to Qatar. He was like, ah, oh, whatever, man. He came <laughs> up playing through from from Wuhan. That's cool. Yeah, I guess he was. Uh, he was. Uh, oh, he was France his whole life, then played for Algeria. Sixty-two caps. <laughs> yeah, fourteen goals, not bad either. Yeah, he's a baller. That was, was a good player. Dave's yeah, only thirty-one. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, he got like six more years, and he can come to MLS. <laughs> yeah, for for ten million a year. <laughs> yeah, uh, seriously. Um, damn, he's baller for that team too. Sheesh, twenty-three goals and forty appearances. Okay, big dog. Out there putting in work and got that. Stop. <laughs> Damn, his last year in Porto, he had ten goals in the league. That's he's, good. A, he's a good player. Like he was he's a, good a really player. good player. Forty nine uh, appearances, two years in a row. That's wild. Yeah, he's a good player. Let me see. Um, let me see if they ever won anything. Oh, he won the league once with Porto. Yeah, they had a pretty. They had a, they had a, that that year, they had a really good team. No, they did. Um, yeah, he won. He won uh, African Footballer of the Year in two thousand fourteen. That's dope. That's dope, yeah. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that? Okay, yeah, and um, and that was, uh, that was a drug by Swan song year too. That's dope. Yeah, dog. He was like, "Get out of here!" Never mind. Um, <laughs> um, okay, and that was Group E, and then we got Group F. We got Gambia, Mali, Mauritius. I'm, I'm sorry, Mauritania. And Tunisia. <laughs> this feels stupid. I feel like this is the only uh, group with all Muslim countries. Um, wait, what about Guinea-Bissau? Well, no, Nigeria. Um, wait, no. Okay. Yeah, this is Group F. Is the all Muslim, uh, all Muslim country uh, group? <laughs> all, all, all uh, inshallahs in there. Um, okay, uh, and also I feel like we got a bit of a derby here because uh, Martania and Mali uh, they do border each other. Um, I'm sure they've had some conflict in the past. Uh, they got them uh, like now the border that they share I think is all desert. <laughs> but, um, they should have. They they should just back when. Is, is it being doing it again this year, Afcon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. They, Caesar, they actually liked the tweet when I mentioned. It. I was like, "Oh, are we made up now?" Because, like, yeah, I mean, it's been a long battle. Because they just mad. They never. They, why didn't they just throw us on BN four? Just throw us on BN four, dog. Let us just get them B side matches you don't want. Let us just me and Bam commentate those random matches. You swear, let us do it on Twitch. Just come on, dog. You're not using it. I watched some AFCON games last tournament. It was dead radio silent. <laughs> it's radio silent. Let us just talk over it. I'm going to send an email. Like, hey, I'm a Twitch streamer. Can y'all give me some rights? Because I had friends that was doing NBC Olympics. All right? Like, come on now. Let us just get a couple random matches, you know? Hey. Caesar, they're just you know, me and Bam have a good time. Put us in it. Put us in the damn uh, all-Muslim team bracket. We'll have a blast talking about Molly. Bam, Bam start going off about geopolitical issues. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. 
Uh, Mauritania would be like, no, nah, we sending them locusts your way. <laughs> uh, I remember I did a paper on, uh, I think it was Molly when there was like a big locust uh, storm. Uh, what the hell? I might disconnect it. Uh, <laughs> big balling. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know why. I, 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 like, they're crazy. I just feel like they're just not creative enough to want to do something like that. I'm, I'm, let me send an email this. I'm going to send an email this time. All right. Um, but yeah, we got uh, uh, Gambia. Gambia being a very small country, literally enveloped by Senegal. Um, I feel like whenever I used to hear about like a ferry capsizing, it was always Gambia. Um, and that's sad. But we also got Tunisia. Tunisia being probably the best team in the group, um, like by far. But um, I want to talk about a little bit something more, a little bit serious. You know, Tunisia, there was a man named uh, Mohamed Bouazizi, 2010, December. And he was the catalyst for the Arab Spring, which I have no problem saying as a whole was mostly a failure. But in Tunisia, it did lead to some good things. Um, their, their kind of autocratic leader at the time was de uh, deposed. I feel like he died in Saudi Arabia. Um, Bouteflika, for the preacher, that was his name. Uh, and now they have like a bit more of a democratic system. Um, Tunisia also has legal abortion. Um, Ooh, I mean, yay, sorry. sorry. <laughs> stupid. Yeah, we're, we're about to not have it here in America. Yeah, must be nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was uh, really upset about, there was like some, like I, what, from what I remember, I think there was some police trying to like get some money off of him, like some like corrupt kind of scam thingy. And um, he set himself on fire and he died. And, you know, the people took to the streets and they were kind of like demanding, you know, into like price hikes and like kind of like the general corruption that was going on in society. And it took a while, but it did let, lead to some good democratic reforms. Now, obviously we know that the Arab Spring spread to Libya, failure, Egypt, failure, uh, Yemen, failure, Syria, failure. Uh, uh, that was pretty much it. But um, they were trying to do some protests in Morocco. And they were like, boy, we will shoot you. You better get out these streets. Uh, <laughs> but um, didn't Tunisia uh, do pretty good? Was it the World Cup? What was that tournament they were in recently? They went pretty far or like were doing some work. And I forgot what tournament it was. They, they were in some tournament recently. They were think, putting in some work. I think the World Cup they did. Yeah. Uh, then they... Didn't they make it to playoffs? Okay, if I'm not mistaken, th okay, this is what's in my mind. I think they were in the group with Spain and Portugal. Am I right? Yes, yes. It was like something like that. And they were like, they threw the upside down or something like that. I forgot. They had like some crazy game. I feel like, um, because I don't think Spain made it. No, they did not. Um, let, let me double check. That was the World Cup of everybody expected to make it, didn't make it. Um, let me see. Let me see. That was group A. Uh, oh, Uruguay won that group. Uh, what happened after? Oh, no. I'm sorry. That was Morocco. That was in that group. <laughs> Damn it. Am I racist? Um, okay, let me see if that was Tunisia this time. They did some. They were putting in work, I remember. All their, all their team, the whole team had the same haircut. I'm like, damn, is everybody just doing comb overs here or what? Okay. Um, okay. Sadly, um, they're they they didn't make it out of the group in the World Cup. Okay. <laughs> and they, they had some tough match though. I remember I remember watching one of their games. I just remember that. They played they played England. Okay, you know what? Like it took England to like the very last like minute. To yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. They got the dog shit beat out of them by a Belgium 5-2. Um, they beat Panama. Yeah, that's racist. <laughs> I feel like I remember that England game, and maybe that uh, penalty was Fugazi because there was like, oh no, maybe that goal was Fugazi. I forgot. But um, no, but Tunisia. If it's, has if, a, it's, if it's Tunisia versus Panama, who do you cheer for? Tunisia versus Panama. Um. Okay. I remember my mom had a Panamanian homie back in the day. I think his name was Bio. But I also remember uh, one time I was in Virginia 
and I'm in the I'm in a store, hood ass liquor store, hood, and the dudes are speaking Arabic, and I like said something back to them, and they like, oh, and they're like what, and, <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're from Tunisia, and they were like talking a little bit. Um, that was kind of cool. I, I'm I'm gonna go for Panama because America just been rocking them their whole lives. It's unfair. They've been literally abused by America, probably more than any other, probably more than any country in Central America. They got used and abused to build a connection for all the ports, like just abused, dog. And if you're born there, you're literally American now. Like it's insane. Panama, Panama used to be part of Colombia for a long time. Um, really? Yeah. Um, I would probably go for Panama just because, like, I feel like the Tunisia team is going to have a bunch of dudes from France. Like, they probably don't even speak Arabic, dude. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I remember Tunisia had this ball, the, this baller guy that played for like Monaco's reserve team. He's a baller. Yeah, I mean, although Tunisia, like a lot of the DJs I used to like, like uh, like uh, the DJs like Soul Clap and stuff, like they would go play in Tunisia. So I always thought that was dope. I'm like, damn, I'd love to go to one of them parties. Kind of fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, Tunisia was featured on one of Michael Moore's very good documentaries, Where to Invade Next. He's talking about like women's uh, reproductive rights. Um, but I'll go for Panama because you know what I mean? I gotta. For the culture, you gotta do it. I gotta do it. I'm not like them dudes from Fresh and Fit. You know what I'm saying? Those are the worst people in there. <laughs> I watched a video of those girls on there. This is nuts. Caesar, did you hear about them recently? I, I've never watched their show. I know I only watch this, this one show that does recaps on shows and they're always in the highlights about bad things. Uh, like those dudes are literally incels, but there was some clip that came out recently that the dudes was like, oh, we don't mess with like black girls. We don't mess with like dark skin girls. We're not night riders. <laughs> like we don't mess with Shaniquas. I'm like, dog. I'm like, dog, one of these, I don't know who they, I don't know anything about these dudes, but I'm like, one of you is a very dark skinned dude with an accent. And I'm like, I don't know who the hell this other guy is. But these dudes are goofy as hell. Yeah, they're, they're, and um, yeah, some chick was like talking, and he's like telling her like shut up and get off the show for you know, like talking aside. And they're just insane. And uh, if anybody like makes a video like on YouTube, they they got caught because they were like reporting them like to like YouTube mm. and stuff like that to like take their videos down. Like, dog, you're so lame. Them dudes are literally like promoting incel culture on a high level. Yeah. Um, but Caesar, that's the uh, Afcon uh, groups. Um, did you want to talk about January 6th? Because you were a big proponent of that. Uh, what? <laughs> That's absolutely not. There goes our, there goes our being chance. You might have been there. <laughs> Dog, you just throwing it even deeper. Let's go. Was you there? No, I was not. You're I was alibi? actually here. I was not there. I've never, been to, I've never went to Washington, D.C. in my life. <laughs> uh, I've never been farther than Texas. Something. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you want to talk about it or not. It's the anniversary. I don't really want to do it. I'm going to yeah. go off. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to I'm, either. I'm going to go off, honestly. Yeah. I mean, how come we're not talking about it on Power Report, Dan? But yeah. But in closing, that's probably one of the most horrific things I've seen, like since 9 11. Like, honestly, like I remember how I felt watching 9 11 as, and I was young and I was like, no, that's, that's, that makes me uncomfortable. That's scary. Like, no matter where you are, I don't know where Los Angeles, it, it was, it was scary. Like, this is a movie. Like, I remember school was quiet. It was just a weird day. Like, Everybody said that. Yeah, like I remember turning money. I was like half awake. It was like 6 a.m. here. I was like, is this is the movie? Like, is this real? Nowadays, if that happened, they'd be saying it's a conspiracy. And it didn't even happen. But uh, well, I'm say that's no. <laughs> yeah. That's the original conspiracy. That's the OG original conspiracy theory, though. Uh, the last good one. The last real one. <laughs> so, um, um, yeah. And that's the last time that's like the 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 last event you know and especially like in a very crazy 12 month window from january 2021 to january 2020 that 12 month window that was just an emotional roller coaster for just americans you know like it felt never ending like with george floyd happening and the the, the protests happening then covid coming up then we're all quarantined and we we'll get out of quarantine then the president's talking about voter fraud and we're waiting for the president leave, but it was going on then the president leaves and he's literally in that the weirdest part of january 6th i don't yes the videos are crazy is when that weird ass trump audio that moment when trump was like 
go home. We love you. Be safe. We know what you're doing. Whatever. I was like, <laughs> that was a moment. I was like, hey, yo, what? why are you making me uncomfortable? You're already a weirdo and I just laugh at you. Now you're making me uncomfortable in my house. Why are you doing this? Yeah, that was that was a weird time. Well, you see, it's funny because now they now half the people try to say that it, that was Antifa there that day. So I'm like, okay, well, was 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 Trump saying he loved Antifa and Black it, Lives Matter? Yeah, it's it's very strange. I'm like, oh, so so originally you when the the message was that's what you get for messing with us, right? And we're pissed. Now people's catching twenty year bids. They're catching twenty year bids. They're catching twenty fivers. They're catching big time. Like these are. They thought they was just going to get like a week in jail. They, they so, thought that they thought Trump was going to pardon them. They thought they were going to get pardoned by Trump. And they thought they were just going to catch a little time. Yo, sorry, buddy. FBI got involved. They don't FBI doesn't step in just to give you two weeks. <laughs> they mm-hmm. give in prison sentences. They give in football numbers. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, dog. I mean, that's definitely Antifa. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Antifa is going to pull up with zip ties in there to go round up the uh, like no, buddy. And Antifa doesn't brandish QAnon flags. They, they don't. They, and they don't banish a Trump flag. They're not going to do that, dog. How you That's know? Just... How, how you know? You was there at the meeting. You was at the Antifa meeting. You are wearing this black hoodie right now. Mm, mm. <laughs> nah, but uh, that shit was terrible. Um, RIP to the, to the uh people that also died there. I don't know if some people died at the event. I think it was like some people there too. So not not all I'm not I'm not throwing a, a RIP to all of the people that died. No, no, not not all the protesters. I mean like I think it was like an officer that was stopping to die too. That's the only good officer in the whole world. No, one of the dudes uh one of the officers uh well, the video of the officers running up the hallway was like the last time I felt bad for an officer in my whole life. Like I don't feel bad for officers but then he's in there and they're just walking up. I know in my gut that's the scariest feeling in the whole world. Like Caesar, right Caesar. there is like that. That's fear, sir. Caesar, Caesar. Okay, I'm gonna keep it so real right now. That video, of that black cop when they're coming yeah. up the stairs, yeah. Caesar. Black people in America get shot for so much less, and you know, like this is something for any non-black person right now. Like, let me just tell you, this is this is his mindset. He knows. That if this was like some random person on the street with a screwdriver, like 20 feet away, he could shoot them and kill them. And there's no, no, nothing like it's fine. When he saw all them white people running up at him, he was like, I'm not going to get away with shooting these white people. Like, I'm not going to get away with that. So he had to run when, when granted black people on the street get killed for less by police, much less. And he probably uh, killed some black person too, but he know. Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not pardoning him because he's a black yeah. cop at all. But, but the, he the, saw the, all the he saw all the white people. He was like, Ugh. he's a he's a black capital police officer, and in that moment, he was like, that's a whole lot of Americans. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, that's a lot of real ass Americans pulling up. Like I, this is an L for me. He he knew that he was just black at that point. I, I, like I said, I feel I feel nothing in my heart for op ever. But that moment I watched that video, I was like, damn, like, that's just a real, like, that looked like a guinea pig, like, that they're, like, about to just, like, set up for some animal video. I'm like, oh, that's messed up, dog. That's not fair. He knew his badge meant nothing. He just knew that. that he- that's when it transcended what you're, what you've been uh, sworn into. Yeah. It did not matter that day. That's no. swearing is fake, dog. You were just yeah. black, and that was a bunch of white people running up at you, and you knew that you could, like, you can't shoot them. I mean, that was an example of them showing that they're above authority like they 100 percent. The, the number one thing i ever always thought was like the most untouchable thing in the world to me was always the white house the last time i ever saw any kind of white house thing was when i watched independence day and i thought that was so weird like when they did the i'm like damn like that's crazy it's so like pristine like how could you touch that building like to just see them just like be like getting crazy there I just was shocked. It's like they show like a barricade. It's like five officers. It's like three hundred thousand people outside. I'm like, this is insane. Like, well, it's the Capitol building, not the White House. Just to make, just to clarify. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's the same thing for. I us. know I, I, for us. But I know they are. It's like different areas. It's like a whole little city, basically. Yeah. You know? But I mean, but yeah, it's just it's just it's just, cra- it's just crazy to me. It's just it's the visuals are always crazy. They're gonna have that like in the history books of like pictures of like all that going on and and and. 
yeah, I, I know they try to do uh, the best they can to um, like pretend and, and pass over and pass blame because that's what the internet's so convenient for, right? Be able to to dissuade blame, uh, bring up other subjects to make you forget and and, and make you hurt, but um. I'll never forget that moment in my life. Like literally, I'll, I'll be, I'll be. If I have kids, I'll be telling my kids about that. That's, that's oh, nuts. Caesar, the, you know, I, I remember whenever we talked about it on the Power Report, but I do feel like there are a lot of people on the left that like don't take it as serious as they should, and I honestly think it's bigger than nine eleven. Like, really? it, yeah, no, I think it's a bigger thing than nine eleven because, you know. The reason why 9-11 was able to be like so conspiracyized is because you can't really see what's going on. Like you can't see the planning, you can't see the people in the plane, you can't, you know, you can't really know all the details. So you have to accept some level of the official story or you just make up your own story. Um, but with that, we we saw everything. We know who's guilty. And the the ideology that is guilty of that is very powerful in this country. Whether people want to admit it or not, it's more powerful than your progressive, your centrist, or your leftist ideas. That that ideology that stormed that Capitol is much more powerful than you think. And they did it, and they the people that did like, did the most of it are going to get away with it because they're very powerful. And I think. I, at first, I didn't agree with you when you when you said that, but now I think like like let it sit a little bit. I think you're right because whenever someone attacks something with violence, like like 9/11, it's easy to find an enemy to target and make you feel better, right? It makes you feel better knowing that there's an enemy that's also not here, right? It's like the enemy that's like abroad that we can just go take care of, and there's an American like ah, it's over there, it's being handled. But like that moment in in the January 6th, was like a moment where I was like, it was like almost like a look over your shoulder thing, like where it's like, you already feel that, of course, as a black or anybody of any kind of black descent in America, you feel that already when it comes to police violence. But like that almost transcended that, you know, that this this was above that. This was like, man, like, and at the time, I remember I was a government employee. It just felt weird. Like it just, you feel weird about the whole construct of everything you're doing. Like, Caesar, you would have to ask yourself, I mean, you don't live in that place you're at right now. But you had a neighbor right next door, and you would have to ask yourself, whose side would he be on? And, and I remember would, at that moment, would, like, would, I, would he would he target you? And, and I think, like, especially in that time era, like when now, like, if I hear someone's like a like a, a big Trump supporter, it's just like now I'm ready to just have fun with this. Like, this is funny to me. Like, I I just it's funny. Like, it's just funny. But in that, I remember that time, I was just like. Oh, so you just like it felt like you're against me, like like you like you can't. No matter what, even if I was like a massive Republican, I can't imagine watching that just in terms of my fa fabric as a human and be like, that's okay. Like, and 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 I even and I, I'm not even capping. Like, let's say everything that happened to George Floyd went down, right? And we talked about on the show. Like, imagine if that's what happened. It would be obviously a different situation. But if that was going on and and the way we're protesting what happened to George Floyd was bringing zip ties. Like, I'm like, dog, I'm not, I'm not on board with this. Like, this is, this isn't how to do it. That's what I'm saying. Like, even if it was my side, even if it was like progressive people doing like, that's not, that's not what I'm about. Like, you don't bring change through violence. Like, violence doesn't induce change. It brings force change, but it doesn't lay down a fabric for the future. Like, that's not how it works. Caesar, also, there's this narrative that goes along when, <clears throat> I mean, I'm only hearing leftists talk about this issue. So that's who, this is who I'm hearing say this. They talk about the people that were there, that were there for violence. And then they talk about the people that were there and got swept up. And I'm like, absolutely not. Because you remember, when we went to the protest, the George Floyd protest, the first one we went to, I told everybody, if people start wilding out, we're leaving. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, if somebody not, breaks not a window, if somebody does anything, we're just going to leave. Because there's no getting swept up. Like, you leave. When I was at the next protest in Fullerton, when the police came out, I told this man and her friends to leave. He, like. Um, I mean, if I don't, I don't remember. I came to you when you were doing it. I was like, look, I don't, you know, I don't like to go to protests. Like, 
I was concerned for my safety and yeah. when it comes to protests. I don't go to a protest not because I don't believe or I don't have a strong passion. I'm just afraid of my I'm just scared of my safety. And I know me. I, I, I'm I'm liable to turn up. Not me inducing, I'm liable to respond to the turn up. Like that's just I know how I am. So yeah. I'm trying to protect myself. Yeah. But, so I'm like, okay, like. Dog, like, I want to go, but, like, are you sure? And you're like, no. Nah. You literally said what you're saying now. It's like, if it gets wild, we're just dipping. Like, we're not doing this. Yeah. We're not staying. We're not going to join in no matter what happens. Where I'm like, okay, like, that's when I felt safer about it. Because, yeah, like, I, I don't I don't want to be induced into that. And I don't want that to happen. Because yeah. it just and you're not happen. Just because you're there, you're not some, like, passive observer or participator. You have a choice. When, when we were at the one in Fullerton, um, there was... Like there was like, I wouldn't say there was a violence, but like there was, we were walking in the street and like somebody tried to like drive through the crowd. And then like somebody, uh, like one of the protesters like hit the guy's windshield with a skateboard and, and then that person left. Okay, is that violence? Sure, like whatever, but it wasn't that crazy. When we got to the, where the police station was, eventually the police came out when the police came out with like the batons and all the riot gear, the tank thing you were yeah, I was like, okay, Asma, like y'all, y'all leave, just, just leave now, you know, like, I don't know what's going to happen here, but y'all just go. I mean, and, honestly, it's not even worth it. Anymore. Yeah. Just... And, and when I saw them at their car looking, I was like, y'all gotta drive home. Yeah. Like, don't like stay and watch, like leave, leave. You're not like they're like so when the people are talking about oh the people at the some of the people got swept up like no dude there's no passive participants you have a choice when you see it gets crazy you can leave the, 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 everybody knows in any kind of like situation where it's about to be like nuts you're standing here and if there's an aggression you know you have an option to take a step back we, we we've all going. been in fights and like we've around all, fights all, everybody no. knows enough everybody even even like let's say you haven't been in like some school let's say you're just at like a a, a club or a bar yeah. everyone knows i've been literally in a club and the fight is happening like in on my shoulder in front of me and it's everything in my soul i could just i could just get in there if i wanted to but I stood there smiling and laughing. Or, oh, God. Like, or I backed out. I'm like, yeah, I'm just get some water. Or, you know what? This club is getting too nuts. Or, I see bounce rolling. And they get hella aggressive. I'm out, dog. Exactly. So everybody knows there are decisions you can make. Yes. You're never, you're never swept into a situation where you're forced to action. The only time you're forced to action is in defense of yourself. That's different. Exactly. But as a protester going into it and going to capital, the capital situation did because it was less officers than the people. There wasn't major military. There's more officers probably at the Fulton protests. So they became absolutely the aggressor. So you have the choice in the situation to back out. They weren't swept up. No. no. You're walking through the halls that people have never seen in their lives. These dudes stole laptops. That's like the scariest shit ever apart from like being... Someone took all your stuff. That's nuts. Especially Caesar. what they can do now. Caesar, there was one of, one of the Congress people, one of the black ones, I forgot his name. He said that the protesters went to like the area where he like his like safe area that doesn't have his name on it. And they passed by his office that has his name on it. So like there's already inside people, but going back, no patent, like, please stop with the no. passive participant. Oh, you know, some people got yeah. swept up. No, you have a choice. Yeah. I, I know that like, there's a lot of the big issues, especially in Congress. I know is there's some Democratic representatives like Nancy Pelosi that are have interesting stances now in comparison to back then. They flip flopped, which I'm not surprised, especially someone that's super corporate and involved with stocks like her. Like she's she's barely Democratic. That's fine. If you want to if, if you feel like you're a lefty and you want to attack that. Great. But don't forget that the main issue was that at the end of the day. She wasn't one of the people over there. She wasn't on that side. And she went, no matter what, I don't care what your conspiracy theory is. You need to address those that were literally barely in support. Address the people that were in Congress. Probably the ones that voted against. It was like five Republicans that weren't, still weren't uh, 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 with like the whole upheaval. That they remember the elections they were doing like 1 a.m.? There was some people still not down. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important to focus on that. And especially important to focus that that is one of the, like the 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 darkest times in american history especially in a re in recent like the last 20 years like obviously the 90s had crazy moments in 2000s but like in the 10s 
and twenties. This is the wildest, like for sure, like for sure. These are, like for and like sure. you said, since 11 is for sure. Yeah, I guess is, we, what we say modern history. I guess modern times. Yeah. I guess yeah. The bigger than the uh, the right since, like since two thousands is definitely in the two thousand era the biggest moment ever. Like that was insane to me. Bigger. I, I mean, this is gonna sound crazy, but I feel like it's the biggest thing since the War of eighteen twelve. Like. This is literally, I mean, maybe the Civil War. Like, yeah, I'm like, oh, so, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a, the Civil War is a little bit different because, hey. but I'll say this: the reason why it's like bigger than like the the L.A. riots and stuff like that is because this is people like responding to like injustice. What we had on January sixth last year was people responding to a president over a lie with violence and. They were going to kill politicians. Yeah, that's the saddest thing. It's like it's like I always like like for example when you when I see this these like videos of like AOC whatever and like she does these videos. It's so cool to see someone that's very open and chill and everything. But I still think about like that's crazy because her Ilhan and all them were could have literally like at any moment so they could have been over for them. Yeah, they would have been killed. It would have been killed, and it would have been. A very it would have made a dark time even darker. That would have been bad. And when things like that happen, you don't even know if the outcome is gonna be good after you don't even know what happens after. You're just like Caesar, oh if God. any if any politician was killed, Trump would be president right now. Yeah, it, it, like literally sadly, like literally. Yeah. Cause he would have just declared like some kind of martial law and it'd be over. Yeah. But luckily that's probably what their goal was, like to yeah, martial law. For sure. Yeah, that luckily, extends like that extends like a president's presidency, right? Until yeah, like the, the war is over, whatever. L- luckily, that n- luckily, you know, Mike Pence or none of them guys were were uh, harmed. That, that Mike Pence video is nuts. Like when Mike Pence, like that thing when it, I, I remember I'll never forget Bam was like, that's the first time I ever felt bad for Mike Pence ever. Like, oh they, yeah, that, that shit switched up quick, dog. Like I don't, I don't want to live in a world where you kill your like in a country where you just no. kill the people. And, and, and that's why I said no. specific earlier like don't it's not about oh because it's not my side i'm not supportive no i said it before and no matter what on what side i i don't support that because that's not politics that that's not democracy this is Demo- violence i mean it's literally not democracy to go <laughs> enact the violence to take over that's literally just what we do in other countries that's not what we're supposed to do here that's not what we do here yeah. go do that over there don't do that here <laughs> Please, man. Please get that out of here, man. That's why. That's why I think, especially Bam says since eighteen twelve, because that's the first time something's happening, like literally in our soil, in our roots of our 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 political fiber. That's literally happened here. Yeah, they. Uh, 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 I almost said blacky. Um, black people burnt down the Capitol. They burnt the James Madison is like running. I think it was James Madison. He's like running away from like the mob. I, I've told this to you, and I know it sounds corny because you had me watch Watchmen, and one of the most damning things I ever saw is Watchmen. Like, I never even heard of that story in school in my life. So like, oh, yeah. I watched that scene in Watchmen, the the movie cinematic version, and then I went to look it up, and I spent till five thirty a.m. Watching videos of uh, Tulsa, uh, Tulsa, of Tulsa, and, and and Black Wall Street, and I was just I remember I couldn't sleep because I was just like I can't believe like I've been told this is milk. I just can't believe it. Like I can't believe that's literally here. Caesar, so that's that, been, that that happened in other cities too. Sadly. Yeah. So so like I that's still shocking to me that that's just like oh that happened like uh huh that happened like. It's crazy to me. And we, we're the country that holds other people to such standards. Yeah, that happened here, big dog. Like, that's nuts. Like, to even imagine them being like, you know what? I don't like the way that, like, let's say, like, they were like, I don't like the way that uh, uh, um, Los Angeles is enacting so many, uh, the vaccine mandate. You know, let's just go bomb the city. That'd be insane. But that's how it feels like, like, literally. So to see even videos of January 6th is nuts to me. I know a lot of people left these probably like, oh, well, these guys are just being dramatic, whatever, but and it's over. No, it's not like things are only dramatic because you don't want to care about it anymore. But the world doesn't just keep spinning upon disasters. You got to focus and pe- hold people accountable for what happened. And there's been barely accountability at all. Absolutely, man. Them people got the complexion for protection. That ass. And you know what that is. Anyway, we made a podcast. Look at us. We're not going to talk about it. Ah! Uh, uh, it's just because it's just, it's just, it's, it's, I knew it's just too. It was too much. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we went to it. I had to do. We got to talk about Africa in January 6th. Um, we made a podcast episode 235, first one of 2022. Uh, with 235, again, I guess we got 15 left before we figure it out. 235. Um, please follow your boy. We made it season on Twitch. Please follow my YouTube. The Twitch hits 400 followers. All the YouTube videos have now hit 100 views. We're doing good. I've been on the low spreading the YouTube channel out on some behind the scenes action. Let's go. I, your boy is close to buying a camera. I had to return a camera. No camera right now. Wait, We're close right now. Yet, oh, you okay. You returned it. Yeah, I'm, I'm close to getting a camera to be able to make some stuff. We got this. We made it seize. Please follow your boy if you can. And of course, check out uh, We Made It podcast on YouTube. The numbers is on the low, low. We yeah, come back. Saw the last video had uh, two views and one that was my thumbs up. Come on now, let's go. <laughs> I'll be thumbs up and looking in the room. I'm gonna start writing comments in the room. I'm gonna write random comments to Bam in there. I'm find, like, what up, dog? <laughs> I'm talking <down>. today. <laughs> I'm down. Um, yeah, make sure you follow C's and got Dag on. Uh, he, he's randomly uh, Twitch streaming though. I do want to see you and uh, Dan and Sean stream Valorant. That's the thing that I'm here for. I want to see you. I want to see y'all stream Valorant, and I want to see you, uh, Holly, and Holly. Yeah. And so I agree with Bam's tweet. Twenty twenty two. Let's get some more uh, guest hosts. Yes, yes. I, we, I do miss that. Let's do that. Yeah, we got to just uh, ask some people. Hey, do you want to come on the show? Mm-hmm. The the problem is, I feel like we don't really talk about the same stuff other people talk about. Yeah, but we did have a, a professional surfer before. We've done it all. Yes, and we did uh, go on. Can I kick it podcast? Can I kick it podcast? The homie, the homies, can I kick it? Yes, sir. Yes. And we did talk about the um, not to stop using slavery uh, language. But yeah, we made a podcast episode 235. Holler. Still here. For now.